go. Burst of speed. Heisman Memorial Trophy. Bryce Young. Yeah. Tide and welcome to the Crimson Tide Productions studio right inside Bryant Denny Stadium for another episode of Tide TV this week. I'm Kenzie Hughes, joined by my co-host once again, Seth Payne. Roll Tide, Seth. Welcome back. Roll Tide. Happy to be back. Happy to be back and happy to be watching our men's basketball team because that absolutely. Tide is absolutely rolling. The fourth-ranked Alabama men's basketball team was on the road for the second consecutive game when the Tide traveled to Columbia to take on the Missouri Tigers this past Saturday. Yeah, and going into that matchup, Mizzou was 14-4 and overall, and they had won the last three in a row over the Tide in Columbia. With the Tide up 4-2, to two, Brandon Miller drained this step-back shot from beyond the arc, and then check this out. After the steal by Mark Sears, pushing it up the court, a little alley-oop, highlight action. Miller slams it down to make it 9-2, to two, but Missouri would battle back and eventually take the lead. Now with Bama down one, shows what the team's all about. Sears doesn't give up on the play, gets the steal, the hoop and the harm. Bama starting to roll a little bit. They retake the lead and they would never trail again. They would absolutely never trail again as they used a 14-0 run to put that game away. It started with the last seven points of the first half and the first seven of the second half. Consistent play by the Tide as they led by as many as 21 in the second half. And that would be the final margin as the fourth ranked Tide won on the road at Missouri for the first time since 2019. Wow. The 21 point margin was the second largest win margin for Alabama over Missouri in the 20 game series history as the Tide rolled to the 85 to 64 win. Our guys have been doing what we're asking them to do for the most part, you know, I thought we could have done a little better, better job on the glass. Um, so again, you got to give Missouri a ton of credit. Without Kobe Brown, they they didn't really get killed on the glass as much as I thought we could have done to them. They got too many old boards there in the second half. But the way they play, you kind of got to play smaller. So Clowney got a lot of minutes at the five. Charles didn't play as much. You know, Charles one of our better rebounders. So, but. You know, it's a tough road game. Road games aren't easy to come by. The crowd was great. So give our guys a lot of credit for playing as hard as they did on the road. The Alabama defense disrupted the Missouri offense all night. The Tide held Missouri to just 10% shooting on three on three of 28 for the game. Oof. Noah Clowney led the Tide with 17 points and 14 rebounds for his second double-double of the season. Yeah, Mark Sears also had a team-high 17 points while he added eight rebounds three assists and three steals, stuff in the stat sheet. And Brandon Miller scored 15 and also had eight rebounds, while Javon Quinterly was the Tide's other double-digit scorer. JQ finished with 13. And the Tide keeps rising in the rankings. Alabama is second in this week's Associated Press Top 25 for just the second time in program history. It's the Tide's highest ranking in the AP Top 25 in over 20 years. Alabama received 23 first place votes and is just 16 points behind Purdue for the top spot. And over in the USA Today coaches top 25, the Tide was ranked second there as well. Alabama received eight of the 32 first place votes. It was the Tide's highest ever ranking in the coaches poll since the USA Today took over the coaches rankings in the 91-92 season. Records are being broken and the Tide just keeps moving on up, Seth. Yeah. Joe Lenardi has Alabama as a number one seed in his latest bracketology, playing their first two games. Guess where? Birmingham, baby. How awesome would that be? Yeah, that would be great getting to play here in Birmingham. That would be a huge advantage for the Tide in terms of travel and fans. But, you know, Kinsey, they looked pretty good on the road this past weekend, and there were a lot of Bama fans there in Columbia cheering on the Tide. There absolutely were, and it kind of sounded like a home game for the yeah. Crimson Tide throughout the game. Let's take an all-access look at Alabama's big road win over the Missouri Tigers. On the road, hostile environment, likely a sellout crowd, and likely a very tough foe in the Missouri Tigers. You know how we do it. We do it for one another. Me, no doubt, we get a bad team in the country. Clowney to himself, plays it up and in, and Alabama gets on the board first. Picking it up, Clowney lays it in for two against Diara. Miller stepping back, D3, bottom. Ooh, that was nice. 
by Sears. We got three on one. Sears on the drive. The lob and the finish by Miller. Great job defensively. Sears. Woo, beautiful good. take that time by Mark Sears, a transfer from Ohio. But that, look at that shot. Let's fly. Missouri after the tie wins by 21 here in Columbia, Missouri today. Tie TV this week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Ford, for great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. We need a huge crowd to pack home Coliseum. Davis with the spin on the layup. Right to the basket, lays it up, lays it in despite the contact. Spins around the paint, throws it up left side, layup up, layup in, count it, she's fouled. What? You better touch your mouth, girl. Welcome back to Tide TV this week. The second ranked Alabama men's basketball team was back at home in Coleman Coliseum on Wednesday night after a two game road swing. That's right. And the Tide had already beaten the Bulldogs once this season with Alabama defeating then number 21 Mississippi State by 11 on the road in Starkville, 78 to 67 to open up SEC play back on December 28th. But it was a different game on Wednesday night in Tuscaloosa. The Bulldogs jumped on the Tide early, using an 8-0 run to take a 10-2 lead to start the game. Mississippi State took their largest lead of the game at 11 points at 20-9 with just over nine minutes to go in the half. But the Tide responded with a 7-0 run to cut the Bulldogs' lead to just three at 24-21. However, State extended their lead back out to 10, but this Dom Wells three at the buzzer cut the Bulldogs' lead to just seven at the half 36 to 29. Yeah, big time shot. Trailing by 10 in the second half, 43 to 33. The Tide used a 15 to 3 run. Capped off with a big shot from beyond the arc from Ryland Griffin to give Bama their first lead of the game at 48 to 46 with just over nine minutes remaining. The Bulldogs would take the lead back, but Brandon Miller would give the Tide a 53 to 51 lead. From there, the Tide never trailed again. Alabama led by as many as eight down the stretch as the second-ranked Crimson Tide survived a fantastic effort from the Bulldogs with the 66-63 win. I give our guys a lot of credit in the second half. They found a way to get a win in a tight game. We haven't had very many tight games, so it's not the worst that we had to figure out how to win a, a close game, especially when you're down. I, mean, I told our guys two years ago when we won the SEC championship, you know, in the tournament, in the semifinal, we're down 15 to Tennessee. You got to figure out how to win games that aren't going going your way. I mean, we shot 18 percent from three and couldn't buy a bucket, and still figured out how to how to beat a pretty good team. I mean, I know their record doesn't say they're good, but I, I still think they're a good team. I think they're going to upset some people. They play really hard. They uh, had, shoot, they had us down 10. So they uh, or shoot, they had us down 11. I think at one point. So. It's a quality team, but we'll, at this point, we'll take a win. Javon Quinterly led the Tide in scoring with 14 points off the bench to go along with four rebounds and four assists. Brandon Miller and Noah Clowney were the Tide's other double-digit scorers as they had 13 apiece. Miller also had six rebounds, two assists, and three steals, while Clowney chipped in eight rebounds. 
You know, freshmen have really been the key to the Tide's success this season. In fact, there have been three starters for the Tide as of late. Brandon Miller has won five SEC Freshman of the Week awards and leads the SEC in scoring. Absolutely wild, but Noah Clowney has also been very impressive as of late as he was the only freshman in the SEC to average a double-double this past week. Wow. These freshmen are pretty good at basketball, I would say. Oh, yeah. Maybe sarcasm there, but let's get to know a little bit more about Noah from himself. I feel like a big part in it was the play style. I love the play style here, um, along with the culture, coaching staff, a lot of different things weighed into it. I play for my family. Um, I really want to be a good role model for my little brother on and off the court. I want to be a role model for him especially because like he has so much potential. Like, I think he should be better than me easily and I want him to be. And so I feel like if I do what I'm supposed to and he sees that, one day his time will come. With the pieces we got, I feel like we put them together right as a team. We can do a lot. We can be special. And personally, I really want to expand my game even more than I have. Um, and I know what I bring to the floor, and I plan to do it. Tide TV This Week is presented by Ford. For great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide, the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Great competitor, just beautiful to watch from start to finish. Practice is paying off, and she knows it. Beautiful. It's going to be a big number. And stick that landing. Beautiful landing. Oh, my God. Perfect stop. And Swing and a miss. Strike three, and that is your ball. Swing, miss, ball game. Are you kidding me? Back to Tide TV this week. The Alabama women's basketball team had a huge matchup inside Coleman Coliseum this past week. The Tide hosted third ranked and undefeated LSU on Monday night in Coleman Coliseum. Yeah, it was a tough matchup. Entering that matchup, the Tide had won three in a row, though, but it would take a near perfect performance to upset number three LSU as the Tigers led the nation in both scoring offense and rebounding margin. Two very important categories in this game. Absolutely. This three pointer, though, from Aliyah Nye gave the Crimson Tide the early three to two lead. With Bama trailing later 11-7, Sarah Ashley Barker made a two-point game at 11-9 with just over four minutes to go in the opening period. However, LSU closed out the first 10 minutes of play with an 8-2 run to take a 19-11 lead after the first period. Alabama would never be able to get any closer as LSU used a 28-7 second period to take control of the game. The Tide played a gutsy third period where LSU outscored Alabama by just a basket, 22 to 20. But that wouldn't be enough as LSU showed why they are undefeated and one of the top teams in the nation as LSU defeated Alabama 89 to 51. Really great crowd. We hope they'll keep coming back. Um, we've had better nights. And um, again, I just want to thank everybody that came out and hope we can build on that here down the stretch with some really good more home games. Alabama had a tough night shooting, connecting on just 29% from the floor and 5 of 27 from beyond the arc, while LSU shot 48% and knocked down 8 of 18 three-pointers. LSU was dominant in the paint, outscoring Alabama 42 to 22. The Tide had just one double-digit scorer in Brittany Davis. Davis also pulled down seven rebounds. Jada Rice had a team-high nine rebounds while also chipping in five points and a pair of blocks. And with the loss to number three LSU, the Tide is now 15-5 overall, 
four and three in the SEC. And Christy Curry's squad is currently ranked 24th in the net rankings and are a nine seed in ESPN's bracketology. Yeah, hoping to see that seeding improve. The 11th ranked Alabama gymnastics team, though, also had a top ranked matchup at home this past week as well, as the Gym Tide hosted number two Florida last Friday night. It was a matchup of the past two SEC championships, as the Crimson Tide won the SEC title in 2021 and the Gators won it last season. Yeah, the Crimson Tide won the floor exercise event, defeating the Gators by a score of 49425 to 4930. The Tide had four scores of 99 or higher, led by Luisa Blanco, who won the floor title with a 995. Jordan Paradise won her first event title of the year on vault as she posted a 99. The Tide had to count on a fall the uneven bars as the Tide totaled just 48.675 for their team score. Alabama had a strong performance on beam, finishing with a 49-250, led by a 9-9 from Ella Burgess, but it just wouldn't be enough as the Tide dropped their SEC opener to the second-ranked Florida Gators, 197-325 to 196-450. It's great to get, you know, three new faces into the lineup. Um, you know, that was actually unexpected. And so I think they did a really good job of responding and stepping in and stepping up when they were needed. Um, it's always hard to have back to back falls like that. And so it, it really was a big moment for our team to learn how to recover from those mistakes and not let that affect the next person that was going to go. And so Give a lot of credit to, to Maddie Walagora for really kind of turning the corner and, and stepping up and not being hesitant in her approach, but continuing to just go big. And, uh, and then to take that over to Beeman Floor and have our two highest scores of the year so far. Um, you know, I think that says a lot about this team and how they come together and just commit to, to each moment. Um, I think this meet helped us get better, and uh, I think we'll continue to see people step up and get a few people healthy as we move forward throughout the season. After taking on Kentucky on the road this Friday night, the Crimson Tide will return home for a big one next Friday night as Alabama hosts Auburn. It'll also be the Tide's Power of Pink match. Yeah, it should be pretty exciting, but stay with us. We still have a lot to cover. Men's and women's tennis remained undefeated on the year, and the women's swimming and diving team picked up a big win on the road. We'll have that more coming up next right here on Tide TV This Week. It into play. Are you kidding me? Struck him out looking with a fastball. Spectacular. week. The spring season is almost in full swing. Seven sports were in action this past week in both men's and women's golf, along with baseball, softball, and rowing. We'll be starting soon. Yeah, and one of those seven sports in action this past weekend was the Alabama women's tennis team, and Jenny Mine's squad remained perfect on the season. After defeating Navy 6-1 in their season opener, the Alabama women's tennis team picked up their second win of the year with a 4-3 victory over Memphis. After dropping the doubles point, the Tide roared back, winning four of the six single matches to secure the win. The women returned to action this weekend as the Tide heads to San Diego for matches against San Diego State and UC San Diego. And what about the men's team? They picked up a couple of wins on Sunday. George Husak's team defeated UAB 5-2. After winning the doubles point to start the match, the Tide won four of the six singles points for the 5-2 win. And not only did the Tide pick up the doubleheader sweep with the win over Chattanooga, but the Tide swept the mocks as well. 
After winning the doubles point, the Tide swept all six singles matches to defeat Chattanooga 7-0. The men return to action this Saturday as the Tide hosts Michigan State at 11 a.m. Should be an exciting match there, but Alabama swimming and diving, they were in action this past weekend as they traveled south just a little bit to take on Auburn down on the plains. The sixth-ranked women defeated number 19 Auburn 155-145, to while the 14th-ranked men fell to number 9 Auburn 184-116. to the women's squad won 10 individual events in both the relays, while the men won the final relay in five individual events. And the Alabama women's track and field team is off to a great start this spring. The women are ranked fourth in the initial indoor season rankings. The men and women's team combined to break nine meet records as the Tide won 15 total events, with the women capturing nine events and the men winning six at the Samford Invitational this past Friday. And the Alabama softball team is also ranked in the preseason rankings. Alabama is ranked sixth in D1 softball's top 25, seventh in the USA softball poll, and eighth in the Softball America top 25. The Tide begin the season on February 10th, hosting Lehigh and Georgia Southern for the leadoff classic. Do you hear that? Sounds like another ranked Alabama team. The baseball team also ranked. Coach Bohannon's squad was ranked 20th in the D1 baseball preseason top 25. And you can catch the Alabama baseball team in action on February 4th for their annual fan day event beginning at 10 a.m. There will be an autograph session, facility tour, and more. Just go to RollTide.com for more details. Stay with us. We'll have our plays and players of the week coming up next in just 90 seconds right here on Tide TV This Week. Great competitor, just beautiful to watch from start to finish. Practice is paying off, and she knows it. Beautiful. It's going to be a big number. And sticks that landing. Beautiful landing. Oh my God. Perfect stop. We need a huge crowd to pack home in Coliseum. Davis with the spin on the layup. Lays it up, lays it in, despite the contact. Spins around the paint, throws it up left side, lay up, up, lay up in, count it, she's down. What? You went a touch your mouth, girl. TV this week. So those were our ATI plays of the week. Now let's take a look at our players of the week brought to you by Legacy of Hope. And Noah Clowney was the only freshman in the SEC to average a double double this past week as Clowney averaged 12 points and 11 and a half rebounds in the Tides wins over Vanderbilt and Missouri. Good gracious. What about Mark Sears though? Because he tied Clowney for the team lead with 17 points in the Tides road win over Mizzou. Sears hit eight of nine free throws and added eight rebounds three assists, and three steals in the win. Gotta love what he's doing right now, but in helping the Tide improve to a perfect 7-0 in SEC play, Brandon Miller scored 15 points, adding eight rebounds and a block in their win against Missouri. Safe to say that he's pretty good at basketball, right? Uh, just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations to our Legacy of Hope Players of the Week. 
Yeah, and Kinsey, here is something that those student athletes and all future student athletes will be able to benefit from, the University of Alabama's new NIL Center. That's right, and it'll be the first of its kind, a dedicated NIL hub called the Advantage Center, which will serve as the epicenter of sport for name, image, and likeness endeavors for the more than 600 Crimson Tide student athletes. The Advantage Center will have a team of dedicated staff to provide education and resources for NIL opportunities and help student athletes build and elevate their personal brands. This is part of the University of Alabama and Learfield's new 15-year agreement. And here's what Athletic Director Greg Byrne had to say. This is a big deal for the University of Alabama Athletics. It's the first of its kind NIL center that will benefit our 600 plus student athletes. Thank you to our long-standing partner Learfield, Roll Tide. Roll Tide to that, Seth. That is absolutely huge. Talk about a recruiting advantage. Talk about an advantage overall. Oh, Alabama is yeah. already the best university. It's a championship school. And now the student athletes are going to have a huge advantage in securing NIL deals and building their personal brands. I mean, what else could you ask for, Seth? I mean, that sums it up perfectly, Kinsey. That's everything you could ask for if you're a student athlete. I mean, sign me up. I'm pretty sure... I still have a little bit of eligibility left, I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. Well, hey, contact you for NIL deals, right? I played some basketball, too, in my day. May need to call up Coach Curry, see if she needs a shooter. Maybe not, but sign me up either way. I've got some eligibility left, Coach. Yeah, and Coach Oates, if you need a 6'3 small forward with bad knees and dancer sip, I'm ready, too. Just give me a call. But thanks for watching this week's episode. We hope you enjoyed it, and we look forward to seeing you back here next week for another episode of Tide TV This Week. See you next week, everybody. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield.